A2 number two, Avalon 290, here we go. <laughs> Hey folks, thanks for joining me today on this lesson here. This is Avalon A2 number two. This is kind of the breakdown portion of the lesson. A2 number two, I'm demonstrating some techniques and also some theoretical substitutions here that I want to talk about. So first of all, you have the five chord, the C7 chord, we're in the key of F. One of the really important flavors of that is just kind of thinking of it as a C9. You know, it's kind of a very inside flavor. It's very diatonic, just like the melody. To think about is G minor six, and that's when I'm superimposing. G minor six is just like C9, you know what I mean? It's just, it's these notes, it says G minor six, just to get this flavor happening. And I'm using the diagonal method, and that's kind of the technique. So we have G, B flat, D, and E. And I want to talk a moment about this concept, the diagonal method. This is great because it allows you to get from low to high really quickly if you need to, if you want to, uh, just by thinking root fifth, root fifth, root fifth. If you haven't already done this exercise, you're going to really like this way of fretboard visualizing. Root, you got the fifth, you got the root, you got the fifth, you got the root, and the fifth. So you just got to know, hey, I'm on G minor. I got G, D, G, D, G, D, G, D, G, D, G, D. And then once you map that out, root fifth, root fifth, root fifth, then you add on the other notes, the minor third, which is three frets, and then the sixth degree, which is a whole step above the fifth. Okay, and then check out my diagonal studies for the complete study. That's G minor six. But again, we're not playing it over G minor six. We will later when it, in the B section, but for now, we're thinking of it over C9 or C7. Okay, and then when it goes to F6, F6, so that's one, three, five, six. But please do that same visualization, kind of the preliminary practice. You can say root, fifth, root, fifth, root, fifth. Okay, really learn your intervals. Root, fifth, root, fifth, root, fifth. And then in this case, we're adding on the major third and then the sixth. And when I say that we're adding on, we're adding on above the root. That's a major third. It's a big stretch. You could do it with the fingering like this if you want to. I tend to do it like this. I like I kind of I like the stretches. So do what works best for you. So again, that's the first um, eight bars, essentially, the first part of the A section. G minor six for the C7, and then on the F6, F6. That's what I call face value. Okay, now when it goes to C7 this time, I wanted a different color. I wanted that darker flavor. You can see it on the PDF. A diminished seven. Okay, G diminished seven is what I'm thinking, but as you probably know, I hope you know, G diminished seven is the same as B flat, C sharp, or D flat. I want to talk a moment about the dim seven. On a dim seven formula, it's one, flat three, flat five, and then double flat seven. I basically call that a six. So one, flat three, flat five, and six degree. Now check out the shell here again, the diagonal method, the visualization. Do this exercise. Notice I'm just using my first finger because when I bust into the arpeggio, that's my guide, okay? So that you want to visualize root, flat five, root, flat five, root, flat five. This is G dim seven, but we're playing it against a C7 chord to create a C7 flat nine flavor. So again, this is just good preliminary stuff just to do the visualization, okay? And then if you wanted to go F6, you could do this. And get used to that visualization. On this case here though, continuing on in my A2 number two, I, on, on this F6, I chose to do D minor seven. D minor seven, I hope you know, is equivalent to F6, the same four notes, D, F, A, C. Of course, D6 is F, A, C, D, same four notes. 
So it'd be here, D to F, A and C. And this is kind of a